I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. What kind of leads do we have? Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Ferro system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharos and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop it. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Yes, Commander? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. Sounds like overkill to me. The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, 
Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed, but it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander, 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. This is the most important mission any of us have ever been on. The fate of an entire galaxy is at stake. We will stop Saren, no matter what the cost. Well said, Commander. The Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. Right, we're in the bottom deck of the Normandy. We got Rex. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. <laughs> Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. So long, Rex. Shepard. Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? 
kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... We came as soon as we got the distress call, even with the fastest ship in the fleet. You did the best you could, Commander. It's my fault. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Gath are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was tipping. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I didn't bring you along to admire my ship. I know why I'm here. I'll do whatever I can to help you stop Saren and drive his Geth armies back beyond the Veil. Vale. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you later. The Mako Infantry Fighting Vehicle was designed for the System Alliance's frigates. Though the interior is cramped, an M35 is small enough to be carried in the cargo bay and easily deployed on virtually any world. 
With its turreted 155 millimeter mass accelerator and coaxially mounted machine gun, the Mako can provide a fire team with weapon support as well as mobility. Since Alliance Marines may be required to fight on any world, the Mako is environmentally sealed and equipped with micro thrusters for use on low gravity planetoids. The Mako is powered by a sealed hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and includes a small element zero core. While not large enough to nullify the vehicle's mass, the core can reduce it enough to be safely airdropped. When used in conjunction with oh, thrusters, cool. it also allows the Mako to extricate itself from difficult terrain. Hey, sounds like a great space vehicle for us. There are between two and 400 billion stars in the galaxy, and less than 1% of them have ever been visited or had their systems properly surveyed. Humanity's early expansion into the Attican Traverse was haphazard, a desperate race to claim habitable planets where populations can be economically settled. Ignored in the wake of this land grab were thousands of less hospitable worlds, each potentially rich with industrial resources. The wealth of entire solar systems lies untapped, waiting for corporate survey teams or independent pioneers to discover and exploit them. However, this is not an easy task. In addition to the environmental hazards, the fact that uncharted worlds are largely ignored makes them popular bases for criminals, revolutionaries, cults, and others who wish to remain unnoticed by galactic society. All right, so we're looking for Liara in the... in this whole area. I landed on this planet, but um, nothing was there. So we're in the Artemis Tau. We looked at this area. I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate because I'm not really familiar with this part. So let's look at these other planets. All right. Commander, I'm picking up a signal oh. from the planet's surface. There we go. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Dallas is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. The Dallas's surface is covered by wide deserts of silicate sand with only a few areas of indigenous rock, highlands to break the abrasive dust-choked wind. The Dallas's orbit is congested with debris thrown inwards by the gravity of the gas giant, Onomat Otto Malka. Due to a high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. So, orbital period, 2.7 Earth years. Okay, radius, 5,729 kilometers. The day length is 50 Earth hours. This is cool, I like all this little subtle stuff. Surface temperature is 1 degrees Celsius. Ooh. Surface gravity is uh, 0 0.87 G. Hmm. All right, let's land. Okay, so we need encryption. Tech strength, biotic strength. So I think we want to go... I think we want to go tally and... We definitely want tally. Maybe we'll tally and Ashley? Do we get good combat and good tech? I like Garrus, though. Let's do this. Just so we have, like, if we need to hack something, we have Tally. And then if we get in some fighting, we have Ashley, who's pretty good at fighting. Although, Rex is good at fighting, too. Okay. That's how we land. Okay, so we need to find the Distressed Beacon. Distress signal's right here. The anomaly is there, and we have debris over there. Straight ahead. So, it's a windy, sandy planet. Woo! There's something here. Holy cow! That is some kind of crazy worm. What in the world? 
Is this Doom? Oh, is it damaging me? Oh, that was just overheating. I got it. What is this? Is totally Doom. Don't flip over. Oh goodness. How do I, I'm hitting repair. I'm hitting repair. Is it repairing? I think we're repairing. Did not know we were gonna have a boss battle. Get away from it. Oh my goodness. I wonder if I can upgrade this thing. It seems like it's shields or something are pretty weak. What in the world was that thing? Am I gonna get a codex? Planets and locations. There are between two and four hundred billion stars in the galaxy, and less than one percent of them have ever been visited or had their systems properly surveyed. Humanity's early expansion into the Attic country. That's not what we want. My goodness, what in the world was that thing? It killed a bunch of people. We have Alliance Marine. Alliance soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. These are Admiral Kahoku's men. We need to tell him what happened here. Yikes. They were lured here by the distress beacon. Let's get in the safety of the tank. <laughs> uh. Aliens, non- After the Geths, the Thresher, Thresher Maws. Maws are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia, yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, Thresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a thresher never entirely leaves the ground. Only the head and tentacles erupt from the earth to attack. In hmm. addition to physical attacks, threshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals and emit bursts of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, Marine units were deployed to investigate. The shore parties were set upon by hungry threshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. Alliance forces recommend engaging threshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. I would say, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a secondary. Alien. Uh, oh, this is, oh, this is just stuff. Okay. Wow, okay. Well, that was really intense. I don't know if this has anything to do with uh, finding Liara, but it's definitely cool. I wonder if you can do this on basically every every planet you just explore. Now, you think about how old this game is. This came out, I think, around Halo 1 era. It's like, like a 20-year-old game. And to have this level of open world is quite impressive for its time. Alright, hopefully this is something we need down here. It really does look like Dune with the worms and the terrain. We got somebody, dead person. Mummified Solarian. Recover artifact. 
Um, got it. ID tag recovered. You found Captain Mullins' ident identification tag. How it ended up here is impossible to know for sure. Okay, we got a journal, so that must be a quest. Alright. Let's go check out the debris. Let's go check it out. That's really cool. That worm almost killed me like three times. I wonder if I can upgrade um, my Mako. What was that? What is happening? Stuff's raining down from the sky. I like that the map tells you where these things are. That is nice. Also, this tank is fun. You got jets. Cover me. What is this? Electronic skill still too low. Do I need to upgrade tally? Master override. Does that help? It does help. All right. So I'm, I'm always going to want an electronics person with me. Oh. Eh. There. Oh, I saw it. Okay, we're going to go up here. Yeah. Oh, it changes. I see. Yeah, yeah. Chemical rounds, armor piercing rounds, incendiary. Ooh, incendiary sounds good. Could do armor piercing for my sniper. Oh, okay. So that didn't, again, this is another planet that doesn't, this had more on it than the other planet I went to. All right, so we need to return to Normandy. That was fun though. That worm was crazy. It's like a boss battle.